beautiful. Good morning, beautiful people. I am, and I know it's very, very surprising, but I'm having watermelon, watermelon with passion fruit as per usual, as I do every single day. I was gonna say in, in the summer, but just every single day of my life. I can't imagine it stopping after the summer because I'm just dreaming big, you know? It's actually not the best one, but with the passion fruit. I'm gonna address the crutches situation in a minute. In fact, no, no do you know what? I'm gonna address it now. Also, if I sound nasally and like I've got a cold, um, it's because I do. I'm basically just getting it from all angles right now. Not like that. Today's full day of eating is going to be very different because I guess my life has just changed so much and since I last filmed, which was about three weeks ago. I smashed my foot to pieces, which is just the best thing ever. I now have to live with this huge cast on my leg and I can't walk on it. So I'm on crutches. You guys know me, like I used to be an athlete, I mean, I used to be in professional sport. I've always been active, I always train. So the fact that in the last two to three weeks, I've had to slow down everything. I mean, by slow down everything, I mean, I've been completely sedentary. So obviously that's just affected every part of my life, like work, food. I was gonna say sex, it kind of ha If anyone has a Kama Sutra book for people with broken legs, then send it my way. Basically, a lot has changed since I last filmed because now I'm completely sedentary. My cravings have changed. What I'm eating has changed, obviously. The amount I'm eating has changed. In fact, the funny thing is, now that I'm not training at all and I'm completely sedentary, is that I'm actually hungrier a lot more, which, which I don't know, is the most surprising thing ever. But if you guys thought I ate a lot before, which I did, but I used to have like big gaps in between my meals, but now I'm just hungry all day, every day, even though I'm just sedentary. So put your seatbelt on and get ready for a a lot of food basically. The thing is though, the, the stuff I'm eating is very different because when there's a fucking drill outside. Hold on, let me go and shoot this person. So yeah, I don't know if I mentioned, but I'm also sick. And I think the reason I got sick was because, you know when you're running on adrenaline and your cortisol is so high and you're a very active, busy person. I don't know, you kind of just have a way of pushing through. And I feel like that's been me for the last 20 something years. Finally, I've come to not just like a little bit of rest, but complete sedentary vegetable, like I actually am a cucumber. I mean, if I had to be a vegetable, I'd probably be a carrot because I'm pretty orange right now. See, that's one thing you can't take away from me, my tan. You know, you can take away my, you can take away my foot. You can give me a broken leg. You can take away my ability to breathe through my nose, but you just cannot take away my tan. You just can't do it. It just can't be done. This video is going to be what I eat now to kind of stay healthy, stay fit. Well, not stay fit because I don't have any kind of way of staying fit. But how I'm keeping my body healthy, nourished and satisfied whilst being sedentary and whilst healing a very badly broken bone in my foot and a very bad cold. I just want to eat this and turn the camera off. You're probably thinking, Miles, what did you do? What did you do to break your foot? I was gonna say guess down below and anyone that guesses gets a free jar of liquid gold, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just gonna tell you. Basically, I was at a trampoline park, again, like two, three weeks ago, with some of my good friends and we were just trampolining. I did a backflip and landed on the side of the trampoline, obviously, because it's me and I tried to do like two in a row and kind of cracked my foot. But because I'm such an idiot, Yes. So basically I cracked my foot on the edge, like the hard, the metal edge of the trampoline after doing a very high backflip, like crack, like crack, crack. You have an hour in there. And in the first 10 minutes of our hour, I don't know, my whole life I have just been trained to push through pain, right? I was in professional sports since I was very young. When you have an injury, when you're cramping, I don't know, even in day-to-day -day life now, like if I have a headache or I'm tired, I just, push through pain. I don't know really what it means to have a bit of pain and then just stop. So, and because we were having fun, I just kept bouncing. So basically I was bouncing on a broken foot for another 45 minutes. And then we sat down to eat and it, sw it swell up, it swoll up, it swoll up, it swollen up, it swelled up. Wow. It got a lot bigger. Um, I'm talking about my foot. And by the time we got up again, it was three times bigger and it was purple and I just knew that I had smashed it really badly. And then the x-ray confirmed that. Yeah, and then I was forced to physically slow down and then I think my immune system just crashed because my cortisol went down. So I've had a pretty bad cold. And the funny thing is when I get sick, I crave the weirdest things. Like you go, you guys know how I normally eat. I normally have a lot of fruit, huge salads, tofu, tahini, avocados, like all the good whole foods and just whatever else I want as well. But 
whenever I have a cold, whenever I'm sick, whenever I'm recovering from something, I'm still always eating a lot of fruit. But the main thing I crave is salty carbs. Like, mm, you have no idea how much Marmite, if you're from Australia, Vegemite, pretty much the same thing. You have no idea how much Marmite and toast I've eaten in the last two weeks. Also, oh my god, hold on. So yes, I'm a very stupid person who broke my foot and then decided to bounce on it for another 45 minutes just for fun. And I'm actually very lucky because my dad is an orthopedic surgeon, so I was able to get like good care, good advice, yeah, like sorted out straight away. But the fact that I have to be still for six weeks is kind of killing me. But anyways, today is all about the food. And like I said, when I'm, when I'm not that physically active, I just crave, funnily enough, salty carbs. So expect to see delicious salty carbs in this video. Gonna make a bomb lunch, something that I've been craving for a long, long time. And I haven't had it in a couple weeks. Also, the dinner I'm gonna show you, it's a twist on a Persian, a very famous Persian salad that I've shown you a few times, but I'm gonna turn it into the most delicious, comforting summer pasta salad, so. And of course, we have nut butter reviews. We have other things which I'm not gonna tell you about now, so. Yeah. Do you know what that's actually my thumbnail? Thumbnail right there. Like, this boot needs to go. I feel claustrophobic and I want to take it off and I want to go for a run. Just be the crazy Miles that I was before. But today you're getting the slowed down version of Miles and the sick version of Miles who just sits down all day and eats fruit and salty carbs and reviews nut butters. That's all you're getting. Anyways, I'm going to go apply to face and I'll see you at, not lunch, because this is breakfast part one and you already knew that, because breakfast part two is coming, so cheers. Breakfast part two, I'm having, this is a Matisse melon, otherwise known as a sugar baby melon, otherwise known as a snowball melon, it apparently has three names, it's literally the sweetest of the sweetest. So yeah, these sugar baby melons, again, Matisse melons or snowball melons, depending on where you buy them. I was gonna say they taste like vanilla cake, but I remember back in the day when I always used to say that about white flesh sweet potato and everyone was like, calm down Miles. But they do actually taste like vanilla and they're very, very soothing as well. I always start the day with melon and that really doesn't change all year round just because for me it's just refreshing, hydrating, sweet, delicious, very easy to digest in the morning. Then we're gonna move on to the sweet, dense, salty stuff in a little bit. But yeah, first I'm gonna down both halves of this and I'll see you at lunch. Cheers. Will it be lunch though? I don't think it will because I feel like I'm gonna snack before that, so... See you in a bit. Guys, I have a new addiction. Yes, I know another one, another one to add to the list. I know I've slammed rice cakes on this channel so many times because they do basically look and taste like polystyrene. No one can deny. I don't understand why anyone would eat them, which means I don't understand myself right now because I'm eating a, like a pack of these every single day. These salt and vinegar snacker jacks, which are basically right, are they? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Whole grain rice, salt and vinegar, and maize, which is corn. So yeah, these are rice and corn cakes, but the fact that they're salt and vinegar, I'm craving everything salt and vinegar right now. There's something comforting for me about salt and vinegar. Maybe it's because when I was a child, I used to eat a lot of, we call them crisps here in the UK. I know in the States you call them potato chips, just like we say peanut butter, and you say peanut butter. Yeah, when I was younger, I used to eat a lot of salt and vinegar crisps, potato chips. I just looked at the camera again and it was one, one, one. I, I can't do any This is literally the third, bag I've been through in like two days. They are absolutely the most addictive thing in the whole world. I don't understand how I ever lived without these and I'm someone that has always bashed people for eating rice cakes because they're dry. Like I could easily, very easily, um, just live on these for the next four weeks until my foot's better. Salt and vinegar rice cakes, it's where it's at. Also, salt and vinegar peanuts. Don't have any today for this video, but salt and vinegar peanuts next level. When I eat these, I kind of go into a different zone, so I'm gonna turn the camera off now and just down half this bag. Ooh. Whilst I've got you guys' attention, actually, before I make lunch, which is going to be the best tofu scramble in the whole world, because I make it in a different way to everyone else in the world. I just think that, because I don't follow a recipe. A lot of you guys always ask me what supplements I take, and the honest answer is I usually take vitamin D, especially when it's not summer. Regularly, I also take omega-3, but especially when my body needs extra support, extra anti-inflammatory goodness. This is the one from Vivo Life. It's actually very delicious, and it tastes of lemon juice. If you're looking for a good omega-3, I would definitely recommend this one. The way that it's sourced so ethically and sustainably, the flavor, the purity of this product, second to none. I really have to say that. So yeah, for everyone that asked what Omega-3 I use when I mentioned it last time, this is the one I use, it's the one I've always used, and I'll leave the link down below. And it's been like half an hour since I last ate, so let's make lunch. <laughs> Ooh. 
You know what guys, since I got sick, I have been craving so much white onion. I think it's because of the quercetin, which is like very anti-inflammatory. I think it's like antifungal, antibacterial. Either way, I need raw or cooked white onion every single day, like one or two. And my girlfriend hates it, but she has to deal with it right now. For lunch, I'm making some tofu scramble with avocado, fried mushrooms. I might air fry the mu mushrooms actually. The bread I use, because I am addicted to bread again, happens every single time I get sick. This is the white sourdough from Waitrose, but it actually is with rye flour, so I don't know why they call it white. It's like very nutty and earthy and a little bit sweet as well because I'm gonna have some like scrambled tofu on toast and then some avocado on toast and some fried mushrooms on toast and some marmite on toast because marmite you, you don't even know the amount of consumption of marmite per day at the moment is like that's all I can say. Yeah, anyone that makes avocado toast, our avocado toast, or any kind of toast, but doesn't toast their bread. I'm sorry, but people like that, just, they just shouldn't be allowed to. People like that should be shamed and blamed and stoned because it's just unacceptable. Like, why would you call it avocado toast? It should be called avocado soggy bread. So make it crispy and keep it sourdough because sourdough is just, just the best. Little drizzle of garlic infused olive oil. I am actually gonna air fry the shrooms because I don't wanna overload the pan. Salt. Salt, turmeric, of course, sweet smoked paprika, and some garlic granules, and a little bit more oil. We'll crumble in some firm tofu. Well, as firm as we get in the UK, which is not like firm, firm, but. Using my bougie toaster, which I still don't even know how to use properly, but let's give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this stuff, I could literally just eat this. I, I do sometimes just eat this straight out of the pan, but I want the bread too. But when you get the flavors right with the turmeric, the paprika, sometimes I put cinnamon in here as well. I don't understand the people that put black salt in it to taste like egg. Like, obviously I don't want egg. I want scrambled tofu. Do you know what I'm saying? A little burnt sourdough toast. <laughs> Always love a little crunchy though. Before we put on smother on the avocado and the tofu scramble. I'm gonna douse this, well, one of them, with a little bit of Marmite, which is just the best thing in the whole world. Anyone that slams this and says they don't like it, I mean, I just cannot have anything to do with you. I don't know, it's, it's a life-saving in all kinds, all kinds of situations. I don't just think of Marmite as a breakfast food, like it's savory, it can add savoriness and saltiness to anything, even pasta, like Marmite pasta is actually one of the most delicious things in this whole world. I'm pretty sure I've made it on this channel before. If I haven't, I'm going to. Ooh, that's a good avocado. It's a beautiful avocado. And for those of you that don't know, I mean, I already, I, I personally like Marmite with absolutely everything. I mean, apart from sweet things, but Marmite and avocado together, it's like the saltiness and then the buttery creaminess of the avocado is just something else. Do you know what? We got the shrooms for this one too. I put the air fryer in another room because it was just too loud and it was pissing me off. It sounded like a plane was taken off. Something like tofu scramble. It's gonna garnish this tofu scramble with some more of the crispy onions. Mmm, they're so caramelized. Some of the air fried shrooms, which to be honest, are not that crispy. Crispy. I kind of left them in there for about 13, 14 minutes and they're a bit chewy, which I'm not that happy about, but still gonna be delish. I'm gonna give the scramble a little drizzle of sriracha and a little drizzle of liquid gold. Beautiful. Would you look at that? Which one would you rather have? Vote down below. I know that the tofu scramble looks a lot more interesting, but trust me, the Marmite with the avocado and shrooms, 10 out of 10 anyways, I'm gonna go happily apply to face, and you all know what's coming next. Alright guys, today we are reviewing, first of all, I just want to admit, okay, um, this is not the same day. I basically, um, I done fucked up yesterday, and I was fed up of standing on one foot in the kitchen doing things that I just got high and called it a day. So you're gonna have to forgive me for once. We are reviewing this pure pecan nut butter by this brand I keep telling you about, it's called Cape. Um, I think it's, mm, no it's not I think. I know it's locally grown. Locally grown, <laughs> locally grown nut butter. Um, it's not. <laughs> They grow this nut butter just down the road from me. It grows on trees. Peek your own pecan nut butter. <laughs> um, this is a local company, which obviously it, companies. This is a local co <laughs> This is a local company. Uh, guys, I can't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a local company, and you know how I love to. <laughs>
This is a local company, you know how I love to support my locals. That's a lie, actually I don't. It just depends on who's producing what and what's good. And what's in glass, you know, glass, not plastic. How funny would that have been if I just went and then the whole thing just like, the top came off. Um, yeah, the ingredients are just 100% pecans, pecans, sorry for my American viewers. They're soaked to remove phytic acid and then gently dehydrated before being cool milled for a cleaner, fresher taste. So I don't know, it sounds like it's raw, but for some reason it doesn't class it as raw, or it's just not called raw. Maybe you have to pay for an extra badge for it to be certified raw. I don't fucking know. But, all I know is I love pecan butter. Oh, there's a big lake of oil on top, and it's very thick at the bottom. I'm not impressed. Let's take an interval. Go and get yourself some popcorn. Go and make yourself some snacks, some tea, some coffee. Go and make yourself a three course dinner because we're still going to be here churning this in like an hour and a half, okay? So come back. Whew, actually out of breath. Once this is churned, it's actually a really, can we focus? Really, really beautiful texture. Cheers. Oh wow, that tastes like toffee. <laughs> It's pourable, so you know, you can oatmeal it, you can spoon it, you can drizzle it, you can... This would be bomb on like waffles or pancakes. I would give it a 10 out of 10. It's the best pecan nut butter, pecan nut butter I've ever tasted. All right guys, so for dinner I'm making a traditional, it's not traditional at all, but it's the way that I make it. Salad Shirazi, which I've shown you a few times. It's a Persian salad, which is made from cucumbers, tomatoes, red onion, and the way that I make it with mint and parsley. I think you can also use coriander and dill. There are many different ways of making it. And then you just use salt, pepper, olive oil, lemon juice, mix it together. Everything's diced really fine. And usually that's just the salad on its own and it's kind of like a side dish or a starter. You'd have it with like pita bread. But because I'm craving pasta, specifically spaghetti today, I'm gonna make the same salad, but then I'm gonna toss it with the spaghetti. It's gonna be lemony, it's gonna be garlicky from the olive oil, fresh from the herbs and crunchy from the veggies. It's gonna be, it's gonna be perfection. But something else I wanted to tell you, I know what it is. Hold on. I got these cookies. My best friend Anna, who's a legend, came around the other day and dropped me off these giant vegan cookies from this company called Jossel. Jossel Bakers. I'll put their Instagram on the screen. I'm not sponsored. I don't even know them. All I know is that their giant cookies are absolutely incredible. And if you thought that I was one of those people that doesn't eat cookies because they're not training and they're being sedentary, well, you don't know me that well then, do you? You look. At that. You are supposed to warm these up a little bit, and I was gonna have it for dessert, but as the camera's on now, I feel like I may as well just... Mmm. Beautiful. All right, let's make some actual dinner. You need some big, fat, juicy tomatoes for this one. fresh garlic in here, but I really can't be bothered. Would you look at the freshness of that? The herbs, the smell of the herbs in this is just out of this world. Seriously guys, the pungent flavors in here with the garlic, the lemon, the fresh herbs. If you make a big batch of this, put it in the fridge, even more delicious the next day. Anyways guys, I'm sending you all so much love and I'll see you on the next video. Laters.